Welcome to LG Electronics Single Split Air Conditioning Installation Procedures. Installing the system right the first time ensures great performance and long life from the very start. Let's begin with tools and materials needed to successfully install an LG ductless split air conditioner. You'll need the following equipment. Digital multimeter, micron gauge, vacuum pump, digital charging scale, EPA approved recovery equipment rated for R410A, manifold gauge set approved for R410A use, refrigerant leak detector, nitrogen tank and regulator. And the tools you will need include a number two Phillips screwdriver, a 516th R410A access port adapter, a four millimeter hex wrench, flaring tools, refrigerant tubing bender, a bubble type level, tape measure, open end torque wrench set for tightening flare nuts, core drill and bit capable of boring a two and three quarter inch hole. Now we're ready to begin the installation process. Take a survey of potential installation locations on the job site. Placement of the condensing unit must be within the model specific limits. The clearance for the indoor evaporator should be a minimum of 12 inches on either side, no less than four inches from the ceiling and seven and a half feet from the floor. The clearance of the outdoor condensing unit must be no less than four inches from the back and left sides, 24 inches from the right side and 28 inches from the front of the unit. Now it's time to unpack and inspect the equipment. The indoor and outdoor units come in separate cartons. Make sure the model numbers on both the indoor and outdoor unit boxes match. Remove the indoor unit from its container and packing. As you do this, check the unit for any damage. Locate the packet of installation instructions and review the installation steps before proceeding further. Take your time, it will pay off in the long run. Remove the wall bracket from the back of the unit and set it aside. Next, remove the Phillips head screw from the plastic tubing retainer and remove the retainer from the rear of the unit. After making sure there's no damage, set the indoor unit aside. After unboxing the condensing unit, set the rubber mounts aside and locate the 90 degree defrost drain adapter. The adapter must be installed on heat pump models when the unit will be mounted on a wall bracket. This will allow for a 5H drain hose to be attached. Now that you've confirmed that the system is free of visible defects, you can begin installing the system. Position the wall plate where the unit will be mounted. Using a level, mark off where the bracket will be mounted. Be sure to use enough wall anchors to hold the unit securely. The bracket must not bow away from the wall at the latch points of the evaporator rear chassis. Using the table in the installation manual, mark off where the wall penetration will be made. Remember to angle the penetration downward for proper condensate drainage. Now it's time to bend the refrigerant lines. Exercise care in bending the tubing. If you're doing a surface mount, use one of the three knockouts. A coil spring bending aid is installed on the suction line at the bend to assist you in making this adjustment. Position the black drainage plug on the side that will not be used for drainage. Using needle nose pliers, spread the clamp and attach the drainage tubing. The 18-4 conductor communication cable should be fed through the wall penetration and looped inside the indoor unit for connection later. Bundling the refrigerant lines, communication wire, and drainage tube will help make insertion through the wall easier. Bundle the drain line below the other lines. Proper drainage is dependent on gravity. Take care in guiding the refrigerant and drain lines through the wall penetration. It's always better to have flare connections away from the back of the indoor unit for easier connection and leak detection. Let's head outside to install the condensing unit. The condensing unit can be mounted in one of three ways. It can be pad mounted, bracket mounted, or rooftop mounted. For the purpose of this video, we will focus on a pad installation. Position the pad outdoors. Install the rubber grommets on each of the four feet of the outdoor unit and anchor the unit to the pad. Now you can remove the flare nuts from the service valves. These may be discarded if you plan to use prefabricated line sets. Otherwise, these nuts can be flared onto the lines that will be connected to the system. Before you cut, the tubing configuration must be considered for proper oil return to the compressor. Remember the following points. An inverted trap must be installed directly exiting the service valves of the condensing unit. An oil trap must be formed in the refrigerant lines every 16 feet of vertical pipe run. Once the tubing has been cut, deeper the end and position the tubing to prevent filings from entering the tubing and contaminating it. Using good quality flaring equipment is vital. Follow the directions of the manufacturer of your particular tool. Connect the refrigerant tubing, and using a torque wrench, 
tighten the flare nuts to the torque specification outlined in the installation manual. Remember to use the second wrench to back up the tightening process. Connect the refrigerant lines to the unit. Next, perform a leak check on the system. Connect a nitrogen bottle with the safety regulator to the service valves of the condensing unit. Pressurize the system to 150 PSIG and let it stand while the electrical connections are completed. This way you can come back to leak check after finishing the necessary wiring. Wiring the unit is quick and easy. Remove the rain tight electrical connection cover, setting it and the screws aside. Connect the low voltage wires in accordance with all applicable electrical codes. Move indoors to install the four low voltage wires on the evaporator unit. Go back outside and connect the three high voltage wires, making certain that the unit is properly grounded. Be sure to connect the high voltage power supply in accordance with the local and NEC electrical codes. Leave the disconnect in the off position. Now it's time to prepare the unit for charging and system startup. Use bubble solution on flare connections to check for leaks. There should still be 150 PSIG of nitrogen pressurizing the line set and evaporator coil. After confirmation that the system is leak free, the nitrogen can be purged via the service valve gauge port. Your vacuum pump should have fresh oil in its reservoir and be capable of creating a deep vacuum. Connect the vacuum pump and micron gauge to the condensing unit through the manifold gauge set and begin evacuating the system. The pump should draw the system down to at least a 500 micron vacuum within 3 to 5 minutes. This may take longer if the system has a maximum length of pipe connected to it. Allow the pump to operate at 500 microns or less for 30 minutes. Blank off the pump valve and observe the micron gauge. A small amount of drift can be expected. If the value does not exceed 1000 microns after 10 minutes, evacuation is complete. If, however, the value exceeds 1000, reopen the vacuum pump blank off valve and run the pump for an additional 30 minutes. Observe the micron gauge again. If the micron value still exceeds 1000, suspect a leak at one of the connections. The leak must be found and corrected before refrigerant can be introduced into the system. The condensing unit is shipped with a refrigerant charge sufficient for 25 feet of line set. If your particular installation is more or less than 25 feet, a charge adjustment must be made. This must be handled as a critical charge adjustment. The multiplier of 0.22 ounces per foot must be applied. The amount must be added to line sets over 25 feet and subtracted from lines less than 25 feet. The example given in the manual assumes a line set length of 30 feet. This value is 5 feet more than the factory charge, and 1.1 ounces of refrigerant should be added. But if the line set is less than 25 feet, the amount must be subtracted from the equation. In this case, 1.1 ounces of refrigerant should be reclaimed from the unit. To accomplish this, remove the valve caps from the service valves to access the valve stem. Front seat the back seated valves by using a 4 mm hex wrench. Reinstall the seating valve caps to prevent refrigerant leaks. The system must now be started. Energize the outdoor disconnect. Then move indoors to turn the system on. Now we can finish the job by balancing the refrigerant charge. Let's finish the book example of 30 feet of line set. You can now make the 5 foot adjustment by multiplying 0.22 ounces times 5 feet, which equals 1.1 ounces of refrigerant that you must now weigh into the system. R410A is a blend and must be charged in its liquid form. Also, use approved EPA practice for refrigerant removal and charge adjustment for line sets less than 25 feet in length, and while adding refrigerant for line sets longer than 25 feet. Move to the indoor unit and use the remote control to select the cooling temperature. For heat pump units after cooling verification, select the heating mode and confirm correct heating operation, as well as the ancillary functions such as chaos and sleep modes. The unit is now ready to be put into service. Please remember to turn over the installation and owner's manuals to the customer for future reference. Installation of single split air conditioning systems can be done expertly and efficiently if you follow these steps. Cite the installation correctly. Unpack and inspect both units. Install the interior unit according to direction. Install the exterior unit as instructed. Wire the power according to code. Check for leaks with a micron gauge. Evacuate and charge the unit with the exact amount of refrigerant. Thank you for watching and enjoy expert installations.